So uh, I want to talk to you guys about salting. Okay, salting, salting passwords. Okay, password security for applications, web applications. Okay, so uh, this is what motivated me to give this talk today. Um, this is a news article from a couple days ago um, about LinkedIn and eHarmony and some other site. Uh, had their password database compromised. Okay, so they were doing, uh, I would say, minimal amount of security, which is they were hashing their passwords. Okay, but um, their entire database. Here they say eight million records were leaked. It's actually probably more than that. Just the hackers only disclosed these eight million records, probably because these were the hard ones, or maybe not hard ones. But anyway, only 8 million records were disclosed in this example. Okay. So I want to tell you, uh, well, I guess since I have this up, I can say, first of all, what's going on here. Okay. So what happens is people have passwords like this. This password says, this is, this is not secure. Okay. That's somebody's password. I believe the LinkedIn password requirements are more than 8 characters. That I believe is their only requirement. Okay? So somebody used the password, this is not secure as a password. So what they do internally to their website is they take this and they uh, they hash it. Okay? They're using an algorithm called SHA-1 to do this, which generates a um, 160 bits worth and then they do some like base 16 encoded or whatever. So they they create some hexadecimal string that they can then store in a database, which is really a 160 bits worth of hash. Okay, and then because then okay, they're not actually storing this password here in this database. Okay, they're storing this. Uh, this is like 40 characters, but I I believe SHA-1 is only 160 bits. So. Um, so that's what they're doing, and so then the hackers they got this big long database full of these 40 character hexadecimal numbers and they somehow determined this is SHA-1. Okay, well, how do they do that? Well, they probably go through and they say, well, okay, I know that LinkedIn requires a 8 character password, so let's see, the password P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8 characters, right? So let's get the Let's do the MD5 of that and see what that number comes up to be. Let's do a SHA-1 and come up with that, SHA-2, come up with that, right? And then they go, okay, so and then since they have 8 million records, probably one of those people uses password, password, right? And so they just look for that. Does that decimal string exist here? Oh, yes, it does. So, okay, they're using SHA-1. And I now know somebody's password. This person's password is a password, right? So, um, okay, that's bad, right? So what did they do wrong? Well, you can talk about their lack of security and preventing hackers from coming in, which is true. But that's not the purpose of this talk. The purpose is assuming that the hacker comes in, how can you reduce the probability that your customers' passwords or accounts will be compromised, right? So turn this off. Okay. So, um, again, this is mostly for web developers, but first a little history. They are, uh, these guys are using SHA-1. Okay. If you're going to be doing any type of hashing of passwords, this is the minimum, okay? Previously, and maybe currently, a lot of people want to think hashing a password, I think MD5, right? MD5 is like, oh yeah, I need to hash something. It's fast, right? It's really fast. The problem is that this has been around since like 1991, and now it's it's fast to generate, but honestly, it's almost just as fast to to crack. You can generate a collision with it just, in, I guess, on a modern desktop computer in a couple seconds. Okay, so it's it's no security. People can come up with an arbitrary password. They even have what's called rainbow tables which is basically just a listing of 
bunch of passwords, plain text, plain text passwords, and then their equivalent value here in MD5. Okay. And the number of bits I think here is I think 128 bits. And it's small enough that they can actually generate this all combinations. So that's what a rainbow table is, is they have some uh, somebody's gone through the work of generating the hash values for all these different passwords, and so when they have a hat when they have the hash, they just try to find it in this pre-existing lookup table. Okay. So that's one way that people do it. And Okay, um, so that's actually the vulnerability even here at the SHA-1 level because it's, the algorithm itself is much more secure, but as I said for LinkedIn, they're still doing this type of lookup table or dictionary attack to defeat it and figure out people's passwords, right? So how do you solve that problem? Well, um, you do that by using what I'm going to talk about, salting. Anybody here know what salting is, technically, what, how it works? Yes? Add some alphabet to pass. Yes, um, not alphabet, but uh, you add something to the password to help um, obfuscate it, okay? So let's say that in the simple example, say that your password is the two character password of PW. Okay, so you generate a, M, a SHA-1 of this, and let's never speak of MD5 ever again, okay? You generate a hash of that, and it comes out as like F, F, D, A, whatever. All right, so that way, well, if it's existing in that rainbow table, then people already know what that is, right? Now, what you do, instead of just generating hash of this, you hash, you take this, plus some random salt. Let's, let's say the word salt, okay? So the hash of this is now, let's say, A811, okay? So now, with these together, now A811, okay? Now, if somebody had this A811 in their rainbow table, and that ends up being the password of la because the, the problem is with this is that they sorry, the problem that the hacker has now is that this password isn't actually going to be what they're going to be able to enter when they when they try to access the person's account so let's say this is Jason at nobelief.com and I put in the password blah, right? So what we actually do on the on the application side is now we actually use the word blah plus salt. And for that, oh, and now it's gonna be uh, 311 A. That's the hash, right? Or if, if over here they say, well, it's actually, I already know that it's blah salt. Same problem, because if it's blah salt, then I'm, now it's blah salt plus salt, right? And now that's something else, right? So it's much harder for them to figure out what's going on unless they know what this salt value is, right? Then it's not so hard. But it still helps defeat the, the problem of these pre existing uh, rainbow tables, because I said never mentioned uh, MD5 or again, but with MD5, they can generate collisions, so fake values that represent these, right? With shell one, the, the number of values that are possible is actually makes it infeasible to generate a, a listing of all possible combinations, okay? There's just too many, too many terabytes or petabytes of, of lookup tables would be required, okay? So they can't actually do that. So if you use a salt, then it pretty much defeats the value of a lookup table. If you don't use a salt, and it seems like these LinkedIn people do not, you can still use a, a lookup table because you find the hash value of the word password, and that comes out with some 
it's a hash, right? And like, like we show is that these people are able to just using these pre-existing rainbow tables of existing password pairs, password hash values, and they're able to just, hey, here it is, right there, in this 8 million listing of, of hashes, right? So this is one way, and probably the way, of handling password security. Okay. So a question for you guys is, how would we actually do this practically, or how should we do this practically? Because as we see here, all right, well, the salt value, where do we store it? If we store it in the database, let's say we have a database of, let's say, email, domain.com, we have password hash, and we have salt. We just store it here in a, as a record, well, yeah, then we, they now know the salt value, so it's, could do it this way, and it is more secure, can't use a rainbow, but you can still use a dictionary based attack where you just try taking password plus the salt and figuring out what that hash is, right? And if you had enough tries per second, you could break some of them, right? Especially the weak ones, right? So how, what's another way we could do this? To avoid the problem. Anybody? Well, we could go through all sorts of ways, but I'll stop and just say my idea or a, a way that could work, would work, as a more optimal solution. So you guys can use this for thinking, and if you can come up with a better way, that'd be even better, okay? So on the application side, you get people's email address, right? Their password. Fortunately, the application has to get this information unless you're using an external authentication system like uh, OAuth or something like that. But if we're at a fairly traditional website that takes in a username and password, email and password, here's how we could do it. Okay? We take this, instead of storing the email, Name, uh, let's say this is the database side, okay? Instead of storing the email, we store the email. This is like the unique identifier for the account, right? Email address. So we still store the email hash. We don't actually store the person's email address. We store the hash of that. Okay? And then the password, of course, we're going to have to store the password hash, right? But we can store the password plus the email hash plus email hash, okay? Like this. So then you're in the database, you never even say who directly, which account this is a password for. You just have a hash of the account and a hash of the password plus the hash of the account. Okay. And this is yourself, okay? This is yourself is the hash of the email. That's a pretty simple way of doing it. Other ways that maybe you might think of first is, well, on the application side, we can store the salt over here. It's nice and some labels. And yeah, that works. Problem is, is that on the application side, you have a data detention, right? So what if you forget this? Oops. Now nobody can access their accounts because they don't have a password. That's generally why it's not a good idea to keep that type of information separate. Okay. So this is one way of doing it, and I think it seems reasonable to me. So that way, if you ever have to store this in a backup, you don't have to worry about somebody getting that backup and reading off the accounts table and hacking people's accounts. Okay, that's it. Thank you.